The end of a 10-game road trip today at Willie Mays Plaza, AT&T Park, on a beautiful Mother's Day 2016. And each year, Major League Baseball goes all out with the pink. And they have the gray caps is here with the pink trim. I love it. And underneath the uh, players wearing, a lot of them are wearing, you know, the pink tight fit undershirts and the pink bats will be on full display today. Rockies and Giants, tough loss for Colorado yesterday, 2-1 to one in 13 innings. There's Ben Paulson. He's in the starting lineup today. What a performance, as we were describing a moment ago, by John Gray, back-to-back -back outstanding outings. The wins will come for Big John. You keep throwing up zeros like that, you're bound to get a lot of wins. There's Brandon Belt. He was a big part of that comeback victory for the Giants yesterday, tripling and eventually scoring in the 10th inning to uh, tie the baseball games. Probably tie the baseball game up yesterday. Charlie Blackman's going to lead things off for the Rockies. Out on the hill, Jeff Samarja is pitching for the Giants. And let's glance at the Southwest batting order this Sunday afternoon for Walt Weiss. Trevor Story will bat second. Cargo will be in that three-hole. Nolan Arenado with great numbers against the Giants the last couple of years. Gerardo Parra. He's hit Samarja well. DJ LeMay, who will bat sixth this afternoon. Then Ben Paulson, Dustin Garneau is doing the catching. Again, Nick Huntley on the disabled list with a strain in the oblique area. Eddie Butler is pitching and batting ninth. Well, Jeff Samarja is off to a great start in a giant uniform. He's 4-1, Spilly. And for the first time in his career, it's kind of hard to believe, but for the first time in his career, he's won three consecutive starts. It is, and you know what? When he signed this offseason five years for $90 million, and you see his record, he's less than 10 games under 500 career. He's 51 and 62 right now, and, and I saw him get the contract, and it kind of scratched my head. And you're wondering what kind of stuff, or you're, you're signing a guy that's never had a winning record, but his stuff is unbelievable. You talk about being able to throw a fastball that runs 95 to 99 miles an hour. He's throwing a cutter now. He's pretty much scrapped his split finger. He used to throw that a lot. It's primarily fastball, cutter, changeup. And, and the cutters would cut up the Rockies, quite frankly, in a ball game at Coors Field. A victory for the Giants, 2 to nothing. The only victory the Giants got in that visit to Coors Field. But Samarja went eight innings, did not allow a run. And the first pitch of the ball game is right about the belt for strike one. Jeff Samarja, 6'5". 225, 230 pounds. 106, the local game time, and a 62 degree Mother's Day afternoon. Right now, uh, wind not blowing too badly by San Francisco standards. Charlie in the game yesterday was two for six. He had a double as well. Two for 10 lifetime against Samarja. Samarja guides that fastball high, one and two. The Rockies, by virtue of that 13-run inning on Thursday, pounded out a big victory, 17-7. to They've lost the last two. It's a slapped foul, so it remains one and two on Charlie. There are those pink undershirts we were talking about. Every year, they, they Major League Baseball adds at least a couple more elements. It used to be, you know, they went with the bats and, and you had the wristbands. And they even had the pink eye black. Yep, that was a nice feature. And he goes inside with a cutter, and he strikes out Charlie Blackman. Defensively, the Giants have struggled a bit with the gloves. In this series, we'll have Mac Williamson in left. Gregor Blanco's in center. Denard Spann getting the afternoon off. Hunter Pence is in right. Duffy, Crawford, Panic, and Belt in the infield. Posey again behind the plate. It'll be interesting for us to watch Trevor Story and the adjustments he makes, Billy, against Samarja. Samarja had his way against Trevor in the first meeting. Well, it was cutter away, cutter away, cutter away. There's a cutter away. And with Trevor Story, the book on him in his short career so far has been not able to handle the outside pitch yet. Down and away is, is where his blue zone is. Inside, he'll get you. But the last couple weeks, 
especially since Arizona. He slowed down his load, and he's driving the ball up as a field a lot better. Down the line, off the bag, extra bases for Story. He'll get a double out of this. Well, there's an early adjustment. He got a pitch in, not away, and he got the barrel out with those fast hands you were describing. His hands are so fast, but the load for me is what starts the entire swing for him. Once he has the quiet load, it allows his hands to explode, and he can see the baseball a lot clearer. Gets back, Samarja wants that ball inside, keeps it inside, but because of the load, see how his hands stay back? He's able to drive straight through the baseball, and he got a double down the left field line. That is one powerful swing, It man. is unbelievable how much torque and how much strength Trevor Story has. And here's a guy who, who could produce some torque and some bat speed cargo at the plate. It's been a while since he's driven in a run. He's getting his hits. We'd love to end that RBI drought right here in the first frame against Jeff Samarja. He takes a strike. Cargo at 314, but he's locked in at four home runs and 12 RBIs for more than a week. Outfield straight up. And that is pulled foul. the numbers good numbers with runners in scoring position I, the way I look at cargo season so far he's not driving the ball like we know he can the last you know 10 12 days but he's hitting 314 <laughs> so if this is a down period so to speak and I put that in air quotes wow that is fair belt will run to the bag and with two outs Nolan will come up with story at third base It'll be interesting with Cargo, where he's at in the lineup, just because Nolan, Nolan hitting fourth, we've seen him being walked a lot more, and we know how good Nolan is, but you're looking at, no offense to Gerardo Parra, but you'd like pitchers to come after Nolan a little bit, and at some point, if they're not gonna pitch to Nolan, you may see a switch between Cargo and Nolan just to protect Nolan with the Cargo. Yeah, an interesting observation because the walks are at, for, for Nolan, you know, three yesterday. He had a three-walk game earlier in the season. He's walking at an unprecedented rate right. for him. Two outs, runner at third. Here's the 1-0 to Nolan. And it's fouled off. Well... As we were describing a moment ago, some comparisons between this year and last year, and we know how last year ended up. What a gorgeous year for Nolan. 42 home runs, 130 which led RBIs, which led Major League Baseball. He's way ahead of that pace this year. 12 and 28 versus 6 and 17, and the walks way up from a year ago. And amazingly, he has struck out only 13 times. 1-1. And C.B. Buckner says that's outside, 2-1. and C.B. Buckner behind home plate, veteran umpire. Jim Reynolds at first. Nick Lentz is at second base, and the crew chief fielded Colbreth, who had, a, had to endure a lot of squats yesterday. He's at third base. He's still got his hands on his knees, still tired. <laughs> Take a knee, Fielden. And this is in the air to deep right field. Pence going back, still going back, and he can't find the baseball. A run will score. Nolan on his way to third, and he's got to get there, and he will. A triple for Nolan Arenado over the head of Hunter Pence, who kind of lost it at the last moment, and the Rockies break on top against Samarja here in the first frame. Well, Nolan is primarily a pull hitter, and... That's probably the farthest I've ever seen him drive a ball opposite field. Nolan getting on top of the baseball, squares it up beautifully, and you can see his follow through. It is so beautiful. Hunter Pence, knowing that the wall is what it is, isn't able to get all the way back, and the ball kicks off. You can see Hunter Pence on the Subaru Supermo. I don't know, Spilly, if he played outfield for a long time. Did he lose that when he, when he was looking for the wall and then tried to look back and find the ball, or did he? 
I don't think he would have caught it. I thought that ball was over his head to begin with. So Marja will get to the bag in front of Para, but the Rockies do get a run. They take advantage of Story's double. And Nolan with his 29th RBI. What nothing, Colorado in San Francisco. Giants coming to bat. What you like to see? There's Gregor Blanco. He's going to lead things off this afternoon for the San Francisco Giants. Our fan normally in that spot. He's being given a day. This is Southwest batting order for Bruce Bochy. Joe Panic will bat second. Matt Duffy had the game winning hit in the 13th last night. Will bat third. Then Buster Posey, Brandon Belt, Hunter Pence, Brandon Crawford in a very deep Giant lineup. Matt Williamson in left field. And a very good athlete, as you know, Jeff Samarja will bat ninth. So here we go, Eddie Butler on the mound, looking for his first victory of the year, but Eddie's got just eight innings so far of work, and that is a first pitch strike. That's one of the notable changes for Eddie this year. Well, and league average, first pitch strike versus a 1-0 count. 218 batting average if you can throw first pitch strike. 266 after that if you throw first pitch ball. So, and Eddie's doing that. And more importantly is, as we've been paying attention to Eddie, is once he gets a hitter in this count, where he's ahead, two strikes, being able to put him away. In the past, they were hitting 247. Hitters were hitting 247 with two strikes. That is, that is way above league average. This year, they're only hitting .56. That's inside. Two and two. Well, you want bright. There's all kind. There's there's a couple different kinds of spikes. You see, Eddie's got a little more color in them, and then there's the straight paint spikes, uh, spikes that Gregor Blanco's wearing, and some other players. Trevor's got those on, and they changed the pink. I mean, it's a it's a brighter fluorescent pink. I it's, like it. I like it. It's last it, couple it, years. It stands out. It's cool. And Blanco wastes this pitch. So Eddie is pounding the strike zone more, and it's, and it's pretty much trust your sinker, which is the pitch that got him moving through the minor leagues at a rapid rate. And that's going to be a base hit the other way. Hara cuts it off. Now can he hold him to a single? He can. That's a terrific play by Gerardo. So Blanco holds, or excuse me, uh, Para holds Blanco to a single. It'll bring up Joe Panic. How about this for the Rockies' defense today? You see Para, Blockman, Gonzalez, Serenado, Story, LeMayu, Paulson, Garneau. Six of the nine, actually, if you include Eddie, seven of the nine starters on defense have not committed an error this year. And we're, we're at May 8th. That's a really good stat. Kruko and Dwayne Kuyper came in and he goes, hey, Rocky's defense, that's premium. That's as good as it comes in the league. And I go, yeah. You just figured that out? <laughs> <laughs> well, 
talking about two guys that handled the ball a ton. Nolan at third has not committed an error. DJ at second, a couple gold glovers, not committed an error. And Story, who's a young kid playing shortstop, he's made just three. CB says that's a strike. One ball, one strike. And the combination of Paulson and Reynolds at first have done a very nice job. They have been great. Well, and when you have other people come up and tell you, wow, I didn't realize how good the defense was, not only the infield, you know about Nolan, you know about DJ, but how good is your outfield defense? Charlie Blackman is your is your worst arm in center field, and he's plus. They didn't want to run on him yesterday. They didn't want to run on him yesterday. We, we just saw Parra hold Blanco to a single, and everybody knows about Carlos Gonzalez and right. Runner going, and Garneau's throw is not going to get him. Ball trickled out of the glove of Story, so a stolen base for Blanco. Blanco is creeping over at first. You can see the movement, high leg kick from Eddie Butler, low pitch by Eddie, so it doesn't make it easy for Garneau to make an exchange. But for Garneau, that is a tough, tough pitch to pick an exchange, and he got it almost there in time. Would have been safe. And Panic lines it to left. Parr is there. Want to go back to the final swing of the game yesterday in the 13th inning. Couple of walks by Miller, got the strike out of Panic, and Matt Duffy came up. Parra got twisted a little bit. Spilly, put your uh, outfielder hat on again. Um, catchable ball? Catchable ball, bad read off the bat, bad turn, he turned the wrong way, but at the same time, that is the most difficult baseball to judge. The ball hit right at you, and when you are on the corner, so your left field or right field, the ball will always tail towards the line. And as soon as you turn the wrong way, you're in straight panic mode. Outside on Duffy, ball one. Second career walk-off hit yesterday for Duffy. His first came a year ago on Mother's Day. We were chatting during lunch this morning. This giant lineup, he used to always be the talk about the pitchers and, you know, Kane and his prime and, and Bumgarner and, you know, obviously Tim Lincecum. And that's what led them to the three world championships. This is a really, really good offensive baseball team. It is unbelievable the quality of bats from top to bottom. And Matt Duffy is your three hole hitter. Runner takes off, but Eddie's got a chance at him and they're going to get him. Did he balk? That's the question. Fielding Colbreth, no signal. No, he he's, said he's out. He, he's, yeah, he's okay, out. I thought for a moment they said he didn't step off properly off the bat, but that's a big out right there. Blanco's trying to read Eddie Butler, and there's the old spaghetti move, as my high school coach would call it. So he didn't, yeah, actually, yeah, he yeah, he's an inside making, move. He was do going inside move from the start. Hey. Huge, two outs. Now nobody on, and that's in there for a strike. One and one on Duffy. And going back to your point about this lineup, it's a good pitch to try to tie him up. To me, Hunter Pence should be your three-hole hitter, and he's hitting seventh in this lineup. But I look at where he's hitting sixth today, but when you look at Matt Duffy having him hit third, the length it gives you. Well, Brandon Crawford's no slouch. He's hitting seventh. Exactly. This is a fair ball, and out at first by a step and a half. Good play by Arenado. We'll continue that conversation when we come back. Rockies have a 1-0 lead for Eddie Butler as we go to the second.
My mom has always been, I guess, the confidence booster for me. And uh, when my dad's telling me to pick it up, my mom's like, you're fine, don't even worry about it. So my mom's always been the, I guess, the more positive in a way, but uh, she's always been there and she's always been willing to help me. And that's something I've always appreciated. And happy Mother's Day to Millie Arenado. You probably uh, saw her on Twitter Tuesday Takeover recently. By the way, Nolan yesterday took a foul ball off his left leg. I talked to him today. He said, you know what? No worse for the wear. We saw him get around to third base with a triple in the first inning. He's good to go. He's got it wrapped a little bit. But that's the deal. And, Spilly, you were talking about that yesterday. That bruise may be there for the rest of the season, but he's going to play. No doubt that that mark will be there all year. Mark, nice tie, by the way. He went out last night to go buy it. He had to go to yeah, Macy's. I, I went to Macy's. I like it. I have a tie just like that. I told Mark that this morning. That's why, that's why we bring it up. Yesterday, here's the foul ball off Nolan's oh, uh, gosh. lower leg. I always think of Todd Hollinsworth when this happens. Todd predated you, Spilly, in, in a Rockies uniform. And he shattered. He had a spider fracture of his tibia and was out for a, for a year. Then Jermaine died with Oakland Athletics years ago. I think it was 2003. Playoff series, same thing. Foul ball off it, broke that tibia. 1-2 on uh, DJ. And he fouls this one off. Isn't that true of moms? And by the way, happy uh, happy Mother's Day to my wife, and happy Mother's Day to yep. Stacy, your Thank wife. You. Um, moms. We, we have three boys. We have a boy and a girl. Moms are always, are they are they well-fed? Are they happy? And dads <laughs> are, you know, come on. Let's get after it. This ball is hit pretty well to center field. And turning his back wants to find the baseball is Blanco. So one out. Moms don't care if you go 0 for 4. No, they don't. They just care if you are well-fed and had fun. That's right. And that's how it should be. And that is how it should be. We, should, we need to learn more from our moms. We do. And from our wives. Yep. See, moms got to apply sunscreen. And I'm always like, why do they need sunscreen? Yeah. And then we come back and the kids are fried and our wives said, did you put sunscreen on them? Um, no. But we got an ice cream. <laughs> the kids are happy. <laughs> Hard for good. Yard goats with a shout out. This ball is looped on a hop to Crawford. It's Rod Paulson. Two gone. Please come home, Hartford Yard Goats. How about their season so far? And they have not played a home game, nor will they probably for another what, three, four weeks. At the end of the month, at the best. And I don't I do not envy the coaching staff and the the players that are going through that, that's that's a tough draw to go 51 games on the road to start off the season. Darren Everson is yep. managing that club, doing a tremendous job. They are as talented a team as there is in minor league baseball. We have more good news to report on the yard goats here after another pitch to Garneau. And that's a base hit for Dustin. Nice job. That'll clear Eddie Butler here, if nothing else, in a second. Well, every day we, we talk about another great performance by one of the pitchers for the Yard Goats. Jermen Marquez, eight innings of one-hit baseball today. Strikes out eight, walks two. You have Jimmy Ola doing his thing. You, um, obviously, you have Kyle Freeland, who's gotten a lot of attention. Marquez was one of the you know the two big names. Was wasn't necessarily a big name to people in Major League Baseball fans, but the Rockies loved his arm when they traded Corey Dickerson to Tampa. Everybody thinks it was just about Jake McGee. Rockies thrilled to have Jake McGee, but Marquez was a guy they had to have in that deal. And, and I don't blame him. If you get the chance to see him, uh, one of my best friends, Jeff Salazar, is the hitting coach in New Britain, says, I've never seen a guy throw so easy, look so effortless in throwing a baseball where the ball comes out at 97 miles an hour. And another one of those guys, who, you know, Jeff Breidich and staff did exhaustive research on a really mature young man also. Start looking at some of the moves the Rockies have made in the last year. 
Think about Miguel Castro, how important he's been to the bullpen. Jeff Hoffman, two days ago, got his first loss, but still seven innings pitched, threw fantastic in Albuquerque, has a sub two ERA. I mean, some of the arms that are coming, they're pretty exciting. I mean, we were there in spring training, there was a different buzz. And now that we're you know, well into May and you're starting to see the starting pitching turn and we're starting to see the arms of the bullpen, you're, there's promise. Two strikes on Eddie. And this is in a peculiar spot. Samarja throws, got him. Boy, that'd have been interesting. That was bang, bang. And Rockies are going to take a look at it with Brian Jones underneath. See if Eddie got his foot to the bag. And evidently he did. Middle of two, Rockies up one nothing. Colorado Rockies baseball on Root Sports is brought to you by your hometown Toyota stores. Toyota, let's go places. And by Southwest Airlines Transparency, low fares, nothing to hide. Our man Charlie Felix went on a little walk after that five hour extra inning affair yesterday. Our chief photographer, Charlie walked 16.8 miles. It took him into Marin County as he went over the Golden Gate Bridge came back and was just inside of midnight. That's Charlie. <laughs> Hardest working photographer in the business. We go to the bottom of the second with Ryan Spielborgs and Mark Stout. I'm Drew Goodman. Eddie Butler and Jeff Samarja hooked up on this Mother's Day in front of yet another sellout crowd at beautiful AT&T Park. 426th consecutive sellout at this beautiful facility. Buster Posey is at the plate. Buster takes strike one. We were talking about guys with lightning quick hands. That's Posey, so quiet at the plate. And that is a soft liner grabbed by Butler, one out. And a broken pink bat <laughs> for Posey. That'll bring up Brandon Belt. Join in on the conversation today, every day, all season long. Send us any of your comments, photos on your favorite social media platform. Make sure you include the hashtag Toyota Talk. We'll get some throughout this Mother's Day. One out belt at the plate. He has reached in 15 consecutive games. He's walked 17 times, in fact, in his last 15 games. The Rockies thought they could pull out a 10 inning victory yesterday and then Belt hit one in triples alley for a leadoff three bagger and would score the tying run at the bottom of the 10th for the Giants after the Rockies took advantage of the DJ triple in the top of the 10th.
outside. Two balls and a strike on Belt. Well, even when the batters get ahead of Eddie Butler, previously they were hitting 354. This year, only 167. Belt fouls this one off. So yesterday it was starting to get rather late in the game, and the only guy left was a was a Suarez kid who never pitched in a big league game for Boach in his bullpen. And so the the scuttlebutt on the bench was Belt, you're going to be the next guy in after that. Brandon was quite a high school pitcher, and he pitched some in junior college, and then went on to Texas. He was one of those left-handed arms that was in the mid 90s coming out of school you tell a position player that they get all fired up some of them do and line drive oh and it avoids DJ I think he had it but it hooked on him DJ is not going to be happy he was he was there and that ball really hooked at the last instant well there's times where a hitter will square up the baseball just right that the ball will knuckle will have no spin like a knuckleball. And it appears to me that that's what happened with DJ. You see the ball and then it takes off on you. And that's just hitting the ball hard. Well, this guy hits the ball hard, Hunter Pence. This ball's well hit to right. Cargo going back and it's off the top of the wall. Charlie comes over to help out. And it'll be second and third. That's what you have to do, really, in every ballpark, but particularly this one. That's a terrific play by Charlie Blackman. That not only saves a run, it prevents a triple. When you're in the outfield, your main job, if you're in center or left, is to back up another outfielder. That ball is squared up by Hunter Pence, a fastball up in the zone. But for a position player, you see it a lot of the times where somebody thinks it's a home run and they won't move. Well, Charlie off the bat is gonna get over there. The ball hits high on the brick and Cargo getting to the wall to try to make a play, watches it bounce. Because Charlie was there, because that's a heads up play, it does, you're right, Drew. It prevents the Giants from scoring a run, having Hunter Pence at third. And right after that play, Cargo looks at Charlie and points to him. That's good. Like, thank you. Yep. That's where, if you think about baseball, and this is the absolute right move. You got to walk Crawford, load, load up the bases, and, and go right on right with my, Mac Williams to try to get a ground ball and get out of it. Baseball is a, a team game, but it is a a number of individual encounters, one after another. And yet that's a perfect example of, okay, the balls, it, it, there's two people involved. Pence hit it, now Carr goes the outfielder. There's actually a third player involved, and, that, and that's where your, your teammate comes in. And why there's always somewhere to go on the baseball field defensively. You don't spectate. Well, there's times where even a, an outfielder on a ground ball, let's say it's a ground ball hit the story, if the right fielder isn't running towards the line and the throw gets past him, no one's there to back it up. So that you do all these little things in the game that never get noticed until something happens. Saw Michael Kadire make a play coming in from right field a few years ago at, at second base. He ended up getting a throw and tagging a guy out. And that's our dream. Outfielder's dream is to tag someone out in the infield. 0-2 oh, on Williamson, you have Samarja on deck. And Matt Williamson getting a lot of reps lately with the injury to Angel Pagan. Now Pagan is not on the disabled list. He's got a hamstring that has prevented him to play, have prevented him from playing in this series. 0-2. Oh, so Eddie had Gregor Blanco in the first inning on the ropes with two strikes, wasn't able to put him away. This is a situation where you have to get the strikeout. That or the ground ball. And that pitch was left up. That was a mistake. The term we throw around, I think, too frivolously as broadcasters. Every pitch that's hit hard is a mistake. Not true. That was a mistake that fortunately was hit hard but foul. 
Yeah, sometimes hitters hit good pitches. Two on Williamson. The wing of the sinker. That was a good pitch. And sometimes hitters miss mistakes. It goes both ways. One out. Belt is at third after singling. Pence hit the double off the bricks, and Crawford was passed on. Big man at the plate, Mac Williamson, 6'4", 240. 25 year old, originally from Jacksonville, Florida. And in batting practice, Williamson can hit it a long way. And we're talking, he can keep up with Hunter Pence. And Hunter, there isn't a spot on this baseball field where Hunter cannot hit the baseball too. by now. So for me with Eddie Butler and his sequence of pitches, the changeup has not been a great secondary pitch for him. The curveball has not been a great secondary pitch. It's been fastball and, and slider. Those are two plus pitches. But if you can't get the strikeout with those pitches, you can elevate. You can use a forcing fastball up in the zone. Good, hard sinker for the strikeout. That was the disappearing sinker. That one will disappear, you're right. When you get a ball in like that and you get the late movement, watch this movement. Inside, gone, see ya. And as a hitter, you see the baseball right out of the hand and you see where the ball is and then that late movement a couple inches inside, no chance to make contact on it. Now, you can't relax here with Samarja. He has five ribbies this year. This is a unique athlete. Go with Shark two. of South Bend. Well, how about this? He went straight Bo Jackson against the Reds. He had a great performance. <laughs> Who does that other than Bo? Are you kidding me? It's like kindling. Start a fire. Everybody in the dugout was like, for the Giants, was aghast. They couldn't believe it. I mean, did you, did you hear how that thing broke? It could have been his leg. I know that, that he has everybody's respect, but you know he's like the old tough guy. You do that. Yeah, I'm like, never going <laughs> to talk, look at you in the eyeballs. See you later. What a job, Eddie Butler. Two in scoring position. He strikes out Williamson and Samarja to end the threat. We'll go to the third. Rockies leading 1-0.
the order against Samarja in the third. The Coors Light Cold Hard Facts are brought to you by Clean Crisp Coors Light. This is an interesting one. This is the 38th 10-game road trip in Colorado Rockies history. They are currently 5-4 and four on this road trip. Check this out. Of the previous 37 trips, they have finished below 524 times. They went 5-5 five and five nine times. Only four times, only four out of 37, did they have a road trip above 500 when they went 10 games. None of those four were ever out west. So if the Rockies win today, it will be the first time that they had a trip out west. And you know what California has meant to this club. You, you endured a lot of these road trips, Spilly. First time ever that they had a winning trip when they went out west for 10 games. And heck, you think about through the years, even the, the two series trips to California. L.A., San Francisco, San Diego, L.A., whatever whatever it was, Arizona. How many times was it one and five, two and four? I mean, it was only a cause for celebration if you finish 500 on a, on a West Coast swing. Well, you know, I'm a Santa Barbara kid, and I would always have friends and family come meet me in different spots in California. Eventually, after getting your tail kicked so many times, I would never call anybody. I'd go, leave me alone. I'm trying to get a win here down low two and one on Charlie that's in the air down the left field line it's gonna fall in the bullpen area while we have time, the shark, this is an interesting story, a sad story, but a, a story that is worth talking about on Mother's Day. Smarja lost his mother when he was 16 years old to a respiratory disease, much like my mom in 2011 or 2009. And so he went through high school and college with his dad and his older brother. And so obviously pitching on Mother's Day means a lot to him. Understandably so. Charlie grounds out to panic one out. So more on the West Coast woes of Colorado through the years. All time, the place they've had the most success until the last year or so was San Diego, 92 and 101. Dodgers, you know, more than 40 games, 45 games below 500. San Francisco, the 19 times they played the Angels at the Big A, 6 and 13. A's. Five and nine we're across the bay last year. And then that doesn't even factor in Arizona. And they've never really played well at Chase Field. Again, a, an early season statement. At the very least, the Rockies go five and five, which is a real good trip out here. But a chance to go home six and four. I think there'd be a little disappointment if they don't leave this road trip with a six and four record. Yesterday was a tough game for the Rockies to lose, especially late in the game with the one-run lead. Well, Trevor Story got the Rockies going in the first, a double down the third base line. It hit off the bag, and then he would score on a triple by Arenado. Good eye. Two and one, that swing pitch goes in favor of the hitter, Story. And this is why it is so important talk about his load the load is allowing him to see that pitch away when he has a quick load because of how his foot kind of hangs and pulls him outside his hip flies open now he's able to recognize that pitch a lot better a lot clearer and he's able to lay off the low and away pitch and when they do make a mistake he's able to hit it and capitalize on it Two and two. So Marja got him with the outside cutter. That's where they go in Denver. And that was a forcing fastball fouled off. The look of story right there is, man, I got a pitch to hit. There are times you're a little hacked off when you foul off a pitch. Sure. Well, you can see where that pitch location is. That's 
in a good spot for him, middle but up. Ball runs back in. And the reaction, dang. He's looking to see where the ball mark is on his bat to see if it hit the barrel. Again, pose you to the outside corner. Three and two on Story. Fifth career start against the Rockies. Four starts, he has a 2.08 ERA. And he got him on the slider. Second strikeout for Samarja. And that'll bring up Cargo. I always laugh. Three two count is is the least favorite count for any hitter because you almost get too aggressive, assuming that you're going to get a strike. And it's almost one of those counts where you rather just take. For the most part, they don't throw pitches right down the middle, and that slider down and away. That's not what you're expecting. You're expecting a, a contact pitch, a fastball up in the zone. Cargo grounded to the right side to the first baseman belt his first time up. Modest numbers, just three for 17 against Samarji. He does have a home run. It's fouled off. We got to see Cargo's mom, his brother, opening series in Arizona. They were in town. Go very close with his family. Ground ball deep in the hole, and Crawford's not even going to venture a throw. So Cargo, who's among the league leaders in base hits to the left side, gets another knock. And that's kind of what he's been doing as he's grinding his way through this period. Well, and with baseball, everybody's been shifting cargo. And this season, he's been focused on trying to prevent it. Get back to hitting the baseball the opposite field because then it puts everybody back in their normal positions. You can see Cargos Gonzalez with the 19 extra uh, hits opposite field. Paro's doing the same thing. Belt, all the players that you expect that have been shifted on. Belt was one of the main guys in baseball last year to have the shift, and now they're hitting against it. Same with Nolan. Nolan has seen the three infielder shift on the left side, and in San Diego was making efforts to hit the ball opposite field. Already today, the triple opposite field. Well, the ball is carrying much better today than it did on Friday or Saturday. Nolan hit a ball a mile to right. Pence hit a ball a mile to right. Two outs, cargo at first, Rockies up one nothing. And here's that triple fastball away and up. And his ability, because he's not afraid to hit the ball opposite field, especially here in San Francisco, Giants pitchers will pitch away. They will play to this ballpark. Not looking to pull it. Crowd here is as sophisticated a baseball crowd as you will find in the game. I mean, they react to everything. They know who's up. Looked like a changeup, and Nolan, you know, Nolan swings and misses, and, and the crowd erupted in applause. Not for a strikeout, just because now yeah, it's one and two. Dives back in. Could be a running count. Cargo not going very much these days. Understand why. Just protect the legs. He's been out there every day but one. You want him in the lineup. Now, these days of stealing 20 plus bases are a thing of the past. But it is a running count. That's why Samarja checked on him. Not going. And a base hit to right. Cargo will stop at second, hence to the baseball quickly. 
Another beat the shift swing. And that's what he's doing. We've, that's exactly what I'm talking about. That ball is, is a ground ball to second base. But because of the shift, because of where they're putting Joe Panic, see where Joe is right here. Because he's right there, Nolan's not afraid to get beat by a fastball and just hit the ball opposite field. So he can sit back. We know how quick his hands are on the inside part of the plate. And that's eventually, he's gonna force defenses to go back to playing straight up. Same with Cargo. I always think of games in this park, and Spill, you played a multitude of games here. It so frequently are one run games, we all know that, and it comes down to, can you get that big hit? And it's not always in the eighth or ninth inning. Can you get that two out knock, like right here, can, can Gerardo come through and you kind of steal a run, if you will? There was nothing going on. And Cargo has a little bleeder that he gets a hit, punch hit to right field. Now all of a sudden you got a runner in scoring position. Exactly, well, and that's what makes this Rockies lineup so much better. Walt talks about being able to slug, but also being able to just put quality of bats together. The Rockies have been excellent with two outs and runners in scoring position. In that fifth inning the other day where the Rockies scored 13, two errors. They took advantage of those errors because it's such a small margin at at t ballpark. And this ball is looped to left. If it drops, it's a problem. It does. Cargo will score. And the Rockies get the bonus run. Two-nothing they lead on three two-out singles. And none of them were hit particularly hard, but they all count. Exactly right. I love that you said that. None of them were hit hard. You don't have to slug to score runs here. You have to be a quality at bat. You have to grind, and you have to take advantage of the situation. Sinker up, runs back out over the plate. Harada putting the ball in play. He's one of the best at putting the ball in play. Finds some open grass. And I'm, and I'm glad you said that, because we talk about empty at bats. And when you can put the ball in play, you never know what happens and now dj will have an opportunity nolan at third par at first you know par likes to be aggressive on the base pass rockies with that knock over the last two days we know what they did thursday they went off on thursday <laughs> offensively but four for 16 with runners in scoring position the last two and a half days And the other thing, I mean, so many bonuses to this. Number one, the second run on the board against a tough customer in Samarja. But now more high-stress pitches and more pitches, period. This ends up being a longer inning for Samarja where he was cruising through. And this is not a running situation for me watching Gerardo Parra just because DJ hits the ball opposite field so well. He takes off, though, and it's fouled off. I think he was just... It's almost a decoy. He was not stealing, and Eric Young is probably telling him, hey, you're not running. First base area is wide open. That's the four hole that DJ loves to shoot. There's no reason to try to steal a bag and take that away, pushing Brandon Belt back to his normal position. I think with DJ's approach, does it take the cutter away a little bit? It has to. Two and one. DJ lets the ball get as deep as anybody in the game anyhow, and, and that kind of runs to his barrel, the cutter. Cutter will come back, well, and it also allows him enough time to be able to see it, see where it is on location. And so he can take the borderline cutter that's away. First and third, a run in, two outs. LeMahieu at the plate, Rockies up 2-0. Good eye. Paulson on deck. DJ swing a sinker inside is a ball that DJ can handle very well and be able to hit the ball to right field. People always, I was an inside out hitter. So fastballs inside was actually easier for me to hit opposite field than a pitch just playing outside. Everybody thinks it's if the ball's outside, you hit it outside. I was more comfortable hitting a ball inside opposite field. 3 1. And a called strike.
barely a strike on the Subaru strike zone. So Cara will be off. Cargo, Nolan, Cara all singled here with two outs to give the Rockies their second run. And this is up the middle with eyes. Great play by Crawford. Low throw picked by Bell. Brandon Crawford, a gold glover at short, and he just saved a run for the Giants. That was a tremendous play. But the Rockies nick another one off of Samarja. 2 0, they lead. Colorado Rockies baseball on Route Sports is brought to you by Subaru Love. It's what makes a Subaru a Subaru. By Coors Light, whatever your mountain, climb on. And by Tavern Downtown. Visit Tavern Downtown after Rockies home games and get two for one draft beers with your same day ticket. Had baseball not come along, that would have been the home of Ryan Spillboard. That pitch is high ball one. <laughs> Alcatraz. Gregor Blanco at the plate. Well, you know what? Frazier retired. I always threw him out <laughs> in Alcatraz, and that actually fit. A little bit of a stretch for you. But you're the only other guy in the room, so I had to throw you on yeah, the Yeah, I bus. like it. I've visited that many times as a player. We take tours. How much fun is that it's place? A, it's a great tour. It's not fun, but it's amazing little, to little be there. creepy, but it's like the number one tourist attraction in the country. Blanco on two hops to Paulson, that second hop came up but Ben was ready for it one gone that'll bring up Joe panic yeah some of the creepy stories from Alcatraz is you're talking about how for certain days or whether it's Christmas time or New Year's Eve the inmates would be able to hear music being played and, and when the wind was blowing out towards Alcatraz all the inmates would sit and it sounded like a concert inside the jail Birdman of Alcatraz. Some other famous uh, prisoners through the years. 2-0, a rare 2-0 count. Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell, the actor? Escape from Alcatraz, Drew. Oh, this, oh, for a second I was like, what are you putting him in there for? He plays closed in like 60. Hard shot, and Trevor's got it. Two outs. Catch the action when the New York Mets come to town May 13th through the 15th. Get your tickets today. Al Sean, Al Con Sean Al Connery. Love Sean Connery. Al Capone. Yep. Uh, Machine Gun Kelly. Machine Gun Kelly was there. Yeah, that's where I was. So they have the, it was like the candle. Some guy made the one that apparently escaped from Alcatraz. 
Well, they never found him. They never found him. He's probably with the fishes somewhere. Like Luca Brasi. Yeah, exactly. Luca Brasi. I always like to make a Luca reference. But he built himself, you know, like a like a dummy to make the guards think that he was sleeping there, and he made it out of clay and earwax. This ball's well hit to left. Hara going back, and does he have it? He does. For a moment there, I couldn't tell if Gerardo was throwing his arms up, saying, I don't know where it is. So a long out off the bat of Matt Duffy. The one, two, three, third for Eddie Butler. We move to the fourth, two nothing. Jam in the National League West. Jenny, thank you. Ben Paulson in the far fourth inning will lead off. 7 8 9 for the Rockies against the Golden Domer. Jeff Samarja. And that's a strike at the top of the zone. Ben grounded the short his first time. Kurt Russell, who makes Aspen his home at least part of the time with his wife, uh, or live in Goldie Hawn. You want to clean something up there. It was escape, but it wasn't escape from Alcatraz. It was escape from New York, and I was thinking Kurt Russell because the other day Mark and I went out on the bay, and I was thinking overboard, and I know it's Clint Eastwood, escape from Alcatraz. Kurt Russell, former minor league baseball player. Very good one. He's talking with uh, Coach Bullwinkle. And Dave we, Bullwinkle, my partner in college basketball. And we were having a great conversation about great MLB players that could have played basketball and I asked him I said which could have been the best one he said you know what Kenny Lofton is up there absolutely that's a that's a great call that you don't know, think about it. he was on that era that wonderful Arizona team with a number of NBA players for Lute Olson one and two on Paulson good swing so another player who Coach Bullwinkle said was a fantastic basketball player, Hall of Famer Bob Gibson. So it could have easily been a professional NBA player. Do you know that originally Sandy Koufax went to the University of Cincinnati on a basketball scholarship? And no, Bob Huggins was not the coach back then. <laughs> Huggy Bear? Before he went on to uh, West Virginia. It's always neat to see players that have made it in sports as a two-sport star. Now the big 
I used to think, honestly, I used to think growing up, man, that's unbelievable. This guy would, like Dave DeBusher, growing up in New York, I was a huge Knicks fan, and Dave DeBusher, the late Dave DeBusher, was a you know great power forward back in that day. He also was a starting pitcher for several years for the Chicago White Sox. I'm like, how can that be? However, here's a 3-2. That is looped foul and out of play, despite Duffy's efforts. But if you think about it, Spilly, I'll, I'll give you an example of one of your former teammates. Matt Holliday was one of the top two or three high school quarterbacks in the country coming out, and we know what kind of baseball player he was. If you're a great athlete, it probably applies in more than one sport. Sure. I mean, think of Dave Winfield drafted by basketball, NBA, NFL, and MLB. Well, Dave Logan, good friend of ours, was the same way. I mean, they're the only two guys I know were drafted in the NBA, the NFL, and Major League Baseball, Winfield and, and Dave Logan. It's crazy. I mean, John Elway, we talk about John Elway all the time. He was a minor league baseball player. Stanford Cardinal. Mark Hendrickson is another player that played against. Began his career in the NBA and then pitched several years in the Major League. Samarja wins the battle with Paulson. Third strikeout for Samarja. Dustin Garneau coming up. Let's check in again with Mark Stout. Mark? So there's Ben Paulson. When the NCAA tournament was going on, I said, Ben, you had to have been a guy that played basketball growing up. And he, and he said, nope, hated basketball. Told me a story that his mom on Mother's Day here, Leslie, said, I'll pay you to play basketball in high school. He did not take that offer. He got a job at the Mellow Mushroom instead. Really? Yeah, you figured Ben would... Looks like he would be a good basketball player, right? You would think. Yeah. Didn't want to play. His mom offered to pay him. It said he just got a regular job. Wow. <laughs> Shoot, Spillian, I would take that deal right now. Yeah, 100%. Here's the 01 on Garneau, 0 and 2. I, I got a couple more names. Prince Stone. Prince. Uh, Princetonians, I guess. They both went to Princeton. Um, and, and both are still active. Chris Young and Will Venable. Corey Sullivan just, uh, Sully just texted us. and Those are two great examples of guys that, that played two sports in the Ivies. Baseball and hoops. Two outs. Butler will be next. And I mentioned... Bob Gibson being a great basketball player played for the Harlem Globetrotters. Yep. How about that? It's the greatest basketball team that's ever been. Most entertaining. Tony Gwynn, fantastic basketball player. Well, he's still, I believe, the late Tony Gwynn is still the all-time assist leader at San Diego State. Well, we're now we're really deep in this. Tony Clark, who's the head of the Players Union. The first time I saw Tony Clark was not on the baseball field. I broadcast one of his basketball games at San Diego State after he had transferred from the University of Arizona. Tony was a, was a terrific forward. Well, Samarja strikes out the side, and we'll go to the bottom of the fourth inning. The Rockies have the two runs.
she's been super supportive uh, of me and um, just love having her around and she tries to give me advice on baseball that's I don't always take the best but she gives me advice um, you know off the field too and uh, she's been a huge support to me nothing like motherly advice from Joan for DJ and I know his wife Jordan is here in San Francisco she's a mom to their dog Coors LeMayhew so you guys all know about Coors that that dog it goes everywhere yeah it was in San Diego I, I'm pretty sure it's here it looks like a fox kind of dogs here I saw it yep it's cool looks healthy looks loved and it's named Coors which we like absolutely Buster Posey with a 1-1 count against Eddie Butler here in the bottom of the fourth. Rockies ahead 2-0. And a slider on the ground to Nolan. He spins, waits, fires, one out. Have I told you lately, Spilly, I love the pink cleats? Oh, I thought you were going to sing a song to me. I thought you were going to sing Rod Stewart. No, you know, Rod Stewart. Bob Dylan does it too, right? Have I told No, that's... Uh, yeah, my pop culture is off today. Have I told you lately that I love you? Remember? Rod yeah, Stewart was Rod singing. Stewart. Yeah, yeah, but the original song. I'm always blanking on his name. I love him. Not a Dylan song? Nope, not Bob Dylan. See, it, it would be easier for me because I can't sing a lick, but... It, but Bob Dylan, great lyricist, really can't sing either. So I have a better chance at singing a Dylan song than a Rod Stewart song. Yeah, exactly. One and one on Belt. He singled his first time up. Hooking line drive past DJ LeMayhew. Two and one. Van Morrison sings the original. My all-time favorite bands. Now it's three and one. And Pence on deck. This is the macho portion of this giant lineup. Rockies will go home after the ball game, after 10 on the road, and get ready for the Arizona Diamondbacks tomorrow night. Ball four, so Butler with his second walk. The first was intentional, and with one out, Pence comes up. Pence doubled off the right field wall, ne nearly hit it out his first time. Well, how has uh, Eddie improved this year? First pitch strike percentage, enormous change. He was always behind in his first couple of stints in the big leagues last two years. This year at 69%, which is way above the league average. And there's a first pitch strike. And the other addition is he, he's really become a sinker slider guy. He, he's almost not throwing the changeup at all compared to years past. Well, and the reason why, 86 to 88 mile an hour changeup, when you throw 90 to 95 miles an hour. It's not a big enough gap. Need that pitch to be at least 10 miles an hour different. The discrepancy needs to be different to really allow the hitter to swing through it. Otherwise, it's it's a BP fastball. Two strikes on Pence. Yeah, he misses down and in at 94. Hunter Pence, happy Mother's Day. Thank you for everything you've done for me. This kid's done a lot for himself. One of the hardest workers in the game. Runner going, and Garneau's throw to get him. You bet. Good throw by Dustin. Good transition as he had to reach inside and adjust his feet. And they cut down Brandon Belt. Kind of a sneak attack there by Belt, huh? Well, I think what the Giants are doing, Eddie has a high leg kick when he goes towards home plate, and his timing's pretty predictable. But DJ being able to reach back those long arms and get the tag on Belt's hip. 
Back up the middle. Belt, is, excuse me, uh, Pence is going to reach as Butler knocked it down. DJ would have had a play, but your instincts are to field anything coming at you. So Pence is aboard with two outs. See DJ reaching back. He's able to get the tag right on the hip. Good view of Nick Lentz watching intently. Perfect position to make that call. Young umpire at second. Brandon Crawford at the plate. Crawford fouls this one off. Brandon last year won the gold glove, deservedly so, at shortstop in the National League. He became the first Giant to win a gold glove, not at shortstop, but at any position since a, another former shortstop, one of the greatest to ever play the position, Omar Vizquel won it in 2006. It's almost a decade between gold gloves. Willie Mays, who celebrated his 85th birthday two days ago, won a dozen of those. Uh, Omar Vizquel was, was a treat to play against, and he's also maddening. You'd hit a ground ball to short, and he would just flip the ball in the air, almost like throwing a lob pass. Uh-oh, this ball's hit a long way to right. Cargo, though, is out there. In triples alley, he makes the catch. He was positioned beautifully. In the inning, a walk, an infield hit, no damage done. We'll go to the fifth. Rockies leading 2 0. Top of the fifth, top of the order for Colorado. Today's news and notes are brought to you by All Copy Products. Marcello Colon at 42 became the oldest player to hit his first major league home run. It took him 25 minutes to get around the bases, but that's a different story. <laughs> Jake Arietta lost a regular season game, has not lost, and he's facing the uh, Naps today. The Cubs, who are unconscious right now, can sweep the Nationals in that four game set. And Aaron Hill, who hadn't been hitting many home runs, got a lot of pop. He hit three yesterday for Milwaukee, including a grand slam in extra innings. That's a strike on Charlie, 0 for 2. Alone looking for his first to the This is great. The entire Nets. They, they all leave. They left the dugout. They, yeah, they, we, we had to edit it, obviously. That's going to be caught out there in left field. Mac Williamson made the grab. Yet the entire. Mets dugout went down the tunnel. So when Cologne got back after his 25 minute journey around the bases, there was no one in the dugout except the Bat Boy. It was a ghost town. That was it. Terry Collins was on the top step, and that was it. There he goes. There's in. Terry. Uh, there's Good Terry. Job. Yeah, nice job. Plawecki was on base. And then they all emerge. <laughs> Bartello needed oxygen, by the way, and it's the farthest he's running. 20 years. 
Story fouls it off. I watched the all the entire bat yesterday. The first pitch, James Shields threw. He's just standing there, trophy tick, right down the middle. Stands there for the next pitch. Doesn't move. 1-1 one, one count. That pitch to James, he was like, okay, he's going to take it. Swing, homer. Hit a bob. Bomb. And that story is behind nothing and two. So Margit has retired five in a row. Rockies got to run off him in the first, double by Story, triple by Arenado, and then in the third, three straight singles. Cargo, Nolan, and Gerardo Parra produced another run. Rockies out hitting the Giants six to four, and that's outside one to two. So we showed the Arietta graphic on there. The Cubs are dominating everybody. They've lost one series this year to the Colorado Rockies at Wrigley Field. Well, after seeing Arietta pitch at Wrigley on that Friday, was it a Saturday? I was like, how's anybody going to score off of him? Well, that scoreless streak ended. I believe it was at 59 innings. Well, the Nationals today were able to run Arietta after five innings. Off the end of the bat to Pence and right. So. Cargo caught that fly ball off the bat of Crawford. And Cargo, like so many players, is going to flip it to a to a fan. And watch what happens with the baseball. That young guy catches it. And see the brains in that relationship, the Rockies fan. She says, thank you. And she gives him a little kiss. But, you know, he's just drunk. He's completely unhappy. So she had to wipe it off because, you know, his club's down 2 nothing. Well, and she's wearing a Ubaldo Jimenez jersey. Yeah. Ooh, this ball is rifled. Get down, EY. That was loud. The ball girl down the right field line, she made an attempt at it, but the ball was 30 feet faster. Good try. Yeah, you better, you're better off taking cover than trying to field something off of his bat. And a called strike. So Cargo in an upside down count, 0 and 2. And an infield single to start that rally in the third. And you can see the shift. Crawford's playing straight up now because of Cargo's ability to hit the ball opposite field. And that's that's the adjustment Cargo's made to try to combat the shift. Opens up the middle where he hits a lot of baseball, especially on the ground. You know, those sharp, you know, stinging ground balls. We've seen him get a multitude of hits up the middle in his career. And, you know, teams now with, it, with so many teams shifting, they've taken some of that away, but now it opens it up again. At least against the Giants right now. Two and two. Here's the 2-2. And Samarja strikes out Carlos Gonzalez to end the inning. Seven in a row set down by Samarja, but the Rockies in the middle of the fifth have a 2-0 lead.
Colorado Rockies baseball on Route Sports is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Transparency, low fares, nothing to hide. Pretty Mother's Day in the city by the bay. In the China Basin area lies AT&T Ballpark. And Eddie Butler's first pitch is chopped foul by Mac Williamson, who shares one thing in common with Corey Sullivan. They have different builds. Corey not quite as big as Williamson, who's 6'4", 240. But they both went to Wake Forest. And then I look at Spilly, just rolled his eyes because he knows that the chest is swelling up in our studios <laughs> back in Denver of our buddy Corey Sullivan. Self-described smartest man alive. <laughs> One and two. I'm actually just teeing you up to take shots at. Oh, I'll take shots at him all day long, but his concave chest probably can't take it. Ooh. And Williamson fouls that one off. Williamson grew up right there, went to Wake Forest High School. Swung on and missed. Butler with fans, the slider, one out. Fans, the first 10,000 through the gates on Sunday, May 15th, will receive a Colorado Rockies plastic ball and bat set, courtesy of MLB Play Ball Weekend. You know, Charlie Blackman in his Jeep carries around a wiffle ball set. Does he? Yep. He says uh, he has like a fishing set, a wiffle ball, and some uh, fingerless gloves, weightlifting gloves. Really? That's all you need. So Marja takes ball one. Just in case he's driving by a park and, and he sees a couple of kids and, and the wiffle ball game breaks out because he's got the equipment. Exactly. I love it. He's either going somewhere to fish or play wiffle ball. He went a lot of exotic places in the offseason. One and two on Samarja. Hey, hot dog, and Samarja's got strikeout number four for Butler. Well, this is going to be a big key for any pitcher, but a, a young pitcher like Eddie Butler, third time through the lineup, third time through a really good lineup. You know, historically, in his career, 356, not good. And, and so far this year, great numbers the first two times through. And in fairness, the 667, I don't really pay attention to it yet, because Eddie had only eight innings of work coming in. So he really, other than San Diego, hasn't had an opportunity to go through a lineup a third time. But that's where he gave up the pair of home runs against the Padres. Well, it's going to be figuring out what secondary pitches work best third time through the lineup because by the third time, a hitter's seen everything you have. So now you're, you're relying more on location, and it's not about tricking the hitter. It's about just giving a, a different look, something that's not predictable. Oh, and two on Gregor Blanco. There's a spray chart. That's a book that Renee Latchman is looking at. On Blanco. That's how the Rockies help determine how they're going to position their fielders. You know, there's so many things that go into it. Ballpark, who's on the hill. Yeah, it used to be, as Philly as you know, you could force the guys all you want at Petco Park because you just couldn't hit it out. <laughs> exactly. Right? Good. Yep. Hit as far as you want. Well, and, and going to scouting reports, a guy may hit the ball in a certain area, but he went. Strike See three. Ya. Strike out the side, Eddie. That's what Butler did. He struck out the side in the fifth. We move on to the sixth. The Rockies shutting out the Giants 2-0 on getaway day.
Nothing on this Mother's Day 2016. Nolan Arenado is going to lead it off for Colorado. We welcome you back upstairs with uh, Ryan Spielborgs. I'm Drew Goodman. The Rockies in a position to earn a split here in San Francisco and go home with a victory at 6-4 and four on a 10-game road trip. That would be sensational. It would be a great, great road trip, especially against a Giants team that at home is very good, and you face the best guys that they have. You face Madison Bumgarner, Johnny Cueto, and now the Shark. Get out of here with that 6-4 and four split. It's a huge boost, yeah. especially knowing that at home the Rockies haven't been playing so well. Doing it out on the road, having that carry over to the next series at home would be really great for it, the Rockies. It would be enormous. I'm a little disappointed in you, by the way. Why? I'll tell you after this pitch. Did I not brush my teeth? I'm not that close to you. I love you, but I'm not getting that close to find out. Did you not get the memo? Yeah. Can I buy you a pink tie? Sure. I will buy you a pink tie. It's a nice tie. It is it's nice. It's beautiful for Tuesday. Yeah. Tomorrow we're purple. I tried to get Maybe Wednesday. <laughs> I tried Not on to Mother's Day. All right. And Nolan fouls that one off. Get him, get him, get him. One of the great oopsies, Spilly. One of the great oopsies in Major League Stadium construction occurred when they built this palace. And it's, it's a great facility because they built it and they said, okay, where's the bullpens? I'm like, what? Oopsie. <laughs> yeah, what bullpens? So they <laughs> put them in down the left and right field lines. Can you imagine building a monstrosity, hundreds of millions of dollars involved, and you forgot a rather important element? Yeah, where, where are the pitchers going to warm up? Well, now it's... I mean, it's grown into the charm of this field. And if you're a, a relief pitcher on a visiting team going down there and, I mean, you are sitting right next to him warming up. Ooh, called strike three, and Nolan really upset with C.B. Buckner. C.B. Buckner saying that's not up. And the Subaru strike zone. It is up, and it's off the plate. Smarja throwing with the cutter. Generally speaking, unless you have Giancarlo Stanton at the plate, who's close to six foot eight, if you get a fastball that's mask high, it's a ball. And Buster Posey caught that at his mask level. Well, they've been trying to ask the umpires to be better at calling balls and strikes from the knees to the chest. They're, they're actually encouraging a high strike to avoid the pitches off the corner. But as the game progresses, if you haven't called that pitch throughout the day, can't start calling it in a game like this, especially where this is one of the best hitters in baseball. You don't want to see the back coming out of his hand. CB's sticking up for himself. It's not high. Two strikes on Para, who drove in a run in the third with a bloop single to left. And Para's gone. Well, the Rockies got to break the rhythm up with Samarja. He has struck out three in a row, six of the last eight. And he's retired nine straight. And they've been pretty quick at bats, to be frank, as DJ LeMay, who comes up, robbed of a base hit his last time. DJ's 0 for 2. Fans, if the Rockies score seven or more runs, make your way to participate in Colorado Taco Bell locations the next day between 4 and 6 to get your Rockies taco special. Live Moss at Taco Bell. Eight strikeouts for Samarja. You're right, Drew. The Shark has gotten in a nice groove. He is commanding both sides of the pit plate, and he's using his off-speed now at will. Well, the Giants became the first team ever to sign two free agent pitchers. You look at Johnny Cueto on the right. Johnny was talking to Angel Pagan. Talk, 
was marvelous yesterday, as was John Gray, clearly. That had never been done before with, with two free agent pitchers signing for an excess of $90 million each signed by the same team. And their return on their investment thus far has been really good. In concert with Bumgarner, when those three pitch, they've won nine straight games when it's Bumgarner, Cueto, or Samarja. When Matt Cain or Jake Peavy start, it's been a struggle. Here's the one, two. Two and two. In fact, when the big three start, they're 14 and six with, again, nine consecutive victories. When Kane or Peavy start, this club has only three wins, three and nine. Hockey's trying to disrupt that streak today. They're up 2-0. Three and two. And Samarja's so 94 pitches in. Well, Samarja is a horse. The last three years, he's thrown over 200 innings. Ball cuts off the plate. Ball four. That is the first walk allowed by Jeff today. And it'll allow Paulson to hit here in the sixth. And it's big because, you know, Bochi pushes the envelope. He's typically had veteran staffs. We saw him do it yesterday with Johnny Cueto, where, where a lot of managers would have pulled Johnny Cueto. He kept him in well over 100 pitches, kept him in to face another left handed bat, even. And he will do the same with Samarja. But let's say that, that Paulson has an extended at bat here, and all of a sudden it's, it's 100, 101 pitches going out to the seventh. Boach may have a decision to make. The other part of the equation, and it works for both sides, Walt Weiss is in the same deal as Bruce Bochy and Dave Rigetti, is they played a 13-inning game. A lot of pitchers used yesterday. Well, and that's why you can't just look at pitch count. You have to trust your eyes and... and is Samarja laboring? How's the ball coming off of his hands? Is, are his mechanics starting to break apart? Is he not repeating? All signs that as of right now, 97 pitches into it, no, he looks fine. He looks as strong now as he did in the first inning. So Billy, how much is agents now versus the thought that, you know, 20 years ago, guys, we didn't think anything of guys throwing 120 plus pitches you can't blame just agents because it's the players too. players realize what's at stake and so players are they're looking to protect themselves as well because I mean you're talking life-changing financial security based on your ability to be on the field one ball and two strikes DJ not going, and it's popped up. Posey hoping for a play does not have one. It's a row deep, and the next pitch will be number 100 for Samarja. Last 25 games between the Rockies and the San Francisco Giants, the Rockies have won 14 of them. Including a seven and five record here, the last dozen at AT and T. And swung on and missed on a 95 mile an hour fastball. So Samarja with his ninth strikeout. Lemayhu left at first. Rockies leading two nothing. Middle of six on Mother's Day.
Here's our Kubota pitching performance as we move to the bottom of the sixth inning. Eddie Butler so far, five innings, no runs, four hits, couple walks, five strikeouts. Big sinker there, got Mac Williamson with traffic. Dirty slider from Eddie Butler. He's backing up what he did in San Diego against a much better lineup with all due respect to the Padres. It's kind of Matt Kemp, Will Myers, and, and some other guys. Here in this uh, giant lineup that you're looking at, it is deep, deep, deep. Panic, Duffy, and Posey, two, three, and four in the sixth inning. Panic, a line drive to left and a ground ball to short. Two and one. Rockies have got very good pitching on the road this year, especially take the last 15 games on the road. This ball's in the air to deep right. Cargo drifting back, and he'll have it on the edge of the track. The last 15 road games, the Rockies starters have fashioned a 319 ERA. Overall, their road ERA at 357 is fifth best in the National League. And that's why Colorado, 18 games in on the road, have 10 victories, 10 and 8. A team where the road has left a lot of blank stares. Just one winning season on the on the road, one winning season on the road in their history, and that was 2009 when they went 41 and 40. Duffy at the ball to deep left his last time. One and one. So far, watching Eddie Butler paying attention to how he's using his fastball, he's adding and subtracting to his fastball, so it's not straight 92 every time. He's throwing the changeup more today that, than we've seen, but even with the changeup, he's taking more off of the changeup, so there's a bigger change in velocity between the changeup and the fastball, where in the past he would throw it as hard as he could. Garneau wants it. Garneau's got it. Garneau has the out. Good communication, Dustin Garneau. Two outs. Live Rockies baseball is back in 2016 with MLB.com at bat on your smartphone or tablet. Stay connected with live radio broadcast stats, news, and more. So two outs and nobody on. Buster Posey, a little soft line drive back at Butler in the second. And a ground ball that was chopped to the left side, handled by Arenado. That's a first pitch strike. So 22 hitters today that Eddie's faced. He's thrown a first pitch strike to 15 of them. It's excellent. That fastball, 93 miles an hour. We saw a first pitch fastball last batter to panic, 90 miles an hour. That's, just, that's a good call by C.B. Buckner. He, he missed location with it, but it was a strike. If you live down there, you're going to do fine. Eddie's ahead of the dangerous Buster Posey. I like that location also. He's hoping that his sinker would run back. Hate the 0-2 complete waste pitch. Agreed. Slider, did he go? Yes. He did. First base umpire Jim Reynolds said he went. And it's another outstanding inning for Eddie Butler. One, two, three. Quick and efficient. Through the sixth, we'll go to the seventh with the Rockies in charge, 2-0. Happy Mother's Day, everybody. It's a boat race.
10 and 1 for the Rockies. Eddie Butler's 92 pitches in. He has a 2 0 lead. And as we go to the seventh, Garneau takes a strike, and Christian Adamas is in the on deck circle. So it looks like it'll be onto the bullpen for the Rockies after six fantastic innings from Butler. He struck out seven. off the plate one ball one strike on Garneau a sharp single to right in the second he struck out swinging in the fourth the Rockies have had one base runner since the third that was a two out walk last inning to DJ two runs six hits for the Rockies no runs four hits for the Giants and this ball's well hit left center field and coming on and laying out and making the catch is Williamson that ball fooled me off the bat Thought it was hit better than it was. I think he hit the ball directly off the end of the bat, and you get a lot of top spin whenever you do that. And for an outfielder, you read swing. You read swing and sound. Outfielders can tell how hard a ball is hit based on the sound. You hear the sound, it sounds okay, and then as you look at it, you realize that the ball was hit off the end of the bat, and you're having to make an adjustment. Williamson, the Wake Forest smart guy with the great play. Now, you, now you're getting after him. So you can get after Corey. You don't get after him. He doesn't know you. <laughs> and he's a lot bigger than you. Yeah. I feel pretty tough him up here. Want to know on the pinch hitter Adamas. Boone Logan throwing in the Rockies bullpen. The Giants next nice inning have two out of three lefties. Bell. And Crawford sandwiched by Hunter Pence. And as you look at Samarja's pitch count, it's at 105. He has thrown 117 pitches. That was the max this year. Three other times he threw over 100 pitches. His last start against Cincinnati, 115 pitches through eight innings. And on April 12th against the Rockies, when he went eight innings, 111 pitches. Think back through the years, Bruce Bochy, dozen years in San Diego, 10 years now in San Francisco. And so many of those teams, this is a pop to shallow center, so many of those teams built on sturdy veteran pitchers. And he lets guys go deep. And it takes the burden off the bullpen ultimately also. I mean, Samarge is as big and strong a guy as you'll find. And you made a, a great point of last half inning, Spilly. Pay less attention to the numbers, pay attention to swings, pay attention to stuff, and his stuff is as good as it was, probably better than it was early. He settled down. There's not been a lot of stressful innings for him other than the fourth, third inning. Ball one on Blackman. have to pay attention and use your eyes when you're watching this game. Javi Lopez. And that's for Cargo. If it, get, if it were to get that far this inning, hopefully it does. Two outs. One and one count on Blackman. Story is on deck. Charlie's 0 for 3. Strikeout, ground out, line out. It's another thing that Samarja's producing this year more than he ever has in the past, ground ball outs. Ground ball percentage is way up this year. And this is on the ground, and it's going to sneak into right field for a base hit. So Blackman has the Rockies' seventh hit and their first knock since Parra dumped that ball into left field to drive in cargo in the third inning. Boy, these last two ball games, Spilly, at AT&T have been classic giant home games. They have been, and the Rockies have been flipping the script. They've been able to score with two outs, and that is so important here. You cannot just, if you get two quick outs, just pack it in, try to swing for the fences, try to get it all in one, one swing. The Rockies have been fantastic in the series so far in grinding out the at-bats throughout the inning not swinging too big throughout the inning even if there's nobody on not trying to pop the homer
Dory takes ball one. Trevor a double in the first inning. And he scored on a two out triple to deep right by Nolan Arenado. Strikeout and a fly ball to right as well. Pence is deep, kind of shaded toward Triples Alley. Charlie a significant lead, not going, and it's fouled off. Well, you're right, this will be Samarja's last batters to get the story out. Pochi's started to warm up the right-hander in Suarez, who's still yet to pitch in the big leagues. Is Javi Lopez for Cargo and Suarez for Nolan if they get to there. Charlie takes off. Good pitch to throw on and out at second base. Posey to Crawford to cut down Blackman. And he got a perfect pitch to throw on. A fastball up in the zone. It was almost like a pitch out. And Buster Posey, for as good of a hitter, his quick catch and release was as good as it comes. Brandon Crawford, stop it. Wow, you're good, Brandon Crawford. I was probably eight years old. I would, when I would strike out, I'd get so frustrated that I kind of tear up and cry a little bit. And she was a little embarrassed, and she didn't want me uh, to grow up crying all the time when I strike out. So she said, "You can swear, but only when you strike out." <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that, that was that's a funny story that sticks out about her. That's an awesome Mother's Day story about Karen Bergman. That, of course, is Christian's mom. By the way, I was talking to Christian today, and I said, yesterday, extra inning game, were you available to pitch? And he looked at me and went, well, sort of, kind of. I was the absolute last resort, but he's back in the mix today, and that was a great Mother's Day story that he gave us, guys. That was an entertaining story. I hadn't heard one quite like that before. I wasn't a crier when I struck out. I never cried. Did you cry? Well, back when you're eight years old. Oh, I thought it was like in pro ball. <laughs> no, 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 no. This is he's like eight or nine years old. Boone Logan is on for the Rockies. Been a really strong season thus far for Boone. Gonzalez Germain is also thrown in the Rockies pen. Belt, Pence, and Crawford in the seventh. The Rockies up 2-0. They got six terrific innings from Eddie Butler. 
He allowed four hits, walked two. One of the walks was intentionally struck out seven. Six shutout for Eddie Butler. How about the work of John Gray and Eddie Butler back to back. That's all you can ask for. Give yourself a chance. And they were been attack they were attacking Giants hitters, going to contact. And then Eddie again. We're, we keep seeing these guys taking steps forward. Eddie being able to finish off the hitters when they when he was ahead in the count. Great job of first pitch strikes. Great tempo. I, it was the tempo today that I really felt set the day for him. Well, here we go. And Belt takes a strike from Logan at 93. I love that tweet from Tony Walters. Thanks, Mom, for cutting the, uh, the crust off my PBJs. My wife did that for years <laughs> for for our oldest. That just missed one and one. It's the little things. It's the little things. It's the little things, the big things, and all the things in between for mom. Three on the right side for Belt. Single and a walk. And an easy play, stay fair. It, it became easy once it hopped over the bag. That's what Paulson was concerned about for a moment. That thing hits the bag, who knows? It probably ends up being a base hit. And you can see the graphic with the stars because they're eating up so many innings on this road trip that the relievers are getting limited opportunities, which also allows them to be better. You can match up against other teams. You can, you can put guys in spots to succeed. You can use Boone Logan in this situation where you match up against Belt and you'll get Crawford and Pence. It's just, it, it comes down to starting pitching. Starting pitching opens all the doors up for Walt to be able to, to manage the game properly. Pence fires at the 95 mile an hour fastball. When was the last time we saw Boone throwing 95? We haven't seen it, but we've seen the slider really getting the bite back. And, th and that was important for him. And we know when he came into spring training, he said, I feel healthy. It's the first time I felt healthy in a couple years. He's dealt with so many elbow issues the last few years. Going back to his final season with the Yankees. Some bone spurs, bone chips removed from his elbow after his final season with the Yankees. Here's the 1-1 one -one on Hunter inside, 2-1. and one. It's all right, move his feet. You have to be able to establish inside part of the plate, and even for a reliever coming in and not being limited to just one half of the plate. Base hit to right. This Monday is Purple Monday, where purple win prizes and the first 5,000 fans will receive a Colorado Rockies lady scarf. You look great in that, Drew. You think? Yeah. Probably not. Crawford is at the plate. It's a big at bat. Crawford. He's documented how improved he is left on left. He seems to come up with big hits. One on and one out. Williamson on deck. And then we get a pinch hitter if we were to go that far. This may be the final hitter for Logan. Crawford yesterday with a hit off Boone Logan on a slider that was up in the zone. And that slider was up. Double play out of order. It was a swing, so it's a strike, one and one. Let's see what happened here. It's 
slider in the dirt right here and just goes right through the five hole in between Dustin Garneau's legs. The ball really took off on him. When he ran out there, he's letting Boone and Logan know what the pitch sequence is gonna be with the runner on second base. Wild pitch, runner at second, one and one count on Crawford. Yeah, in the Rockies dugout tried to stab that with one hand. Tom Reynolds. Let's try TR. I've got to explain to Stu Cole why he did make the play. We got two very good infielders. Swung on and missed. Big strikeout from Logan as he fans Crawford. And he went after him with a mid-90s fastball. Two outs. Huge pitch for Boone Logan. Yesterday, Crawford was able to get a, a hit off of him on a hanging slider. Today, you elevate that fastball and blow it right by him. And I think based on what Walt has seen, even though he has Jermaine Warren, it's like, I'm going to let Boone Logan, my veteran, go after Williamson. Williams. Yeah, most of, remember, most of Boone Logan's career, it's a late-inning guy who faced lefties and righties. This wasn't just a you know left-on-left -left specialist, a guy who threw in the upper 90s. Well, and this year, Boone Logan has been better against righties than he had been in, against lefties. Williamson with two strikeouts on the day so far. ahead 0 and 2. Not only that, using Boone to face Williamson. If you were to go to Jermaine in this situation, Bochy would probably counter by using Denard Span. So which which hitter would you rather face, Denard Span or Williamson? All the things a manager and a bench coach have to think about, but you have to be prepared for every eventuality. That's why he had to have Gonzalez up. Gonzalez to men up. Right now, Kelby Tomlinson, if the inning were to continue, is on deck. To hit for Samarja. Two strike count with a runner at second, Hunter Pence. Logan ahead of Mac Williamson in the bottom of the seventh. Two nothing, Colorado. Albert Suarez. Josh Osich, the left-hander in San Francisco's pen. Here's the 0-2. Ooh. Just missed, one and two. Mobs for Timmy. You see that for Lincecum, that, uh, that sign in the background? They want him back. When he might come back. Well, it's an election year. Good point. One, two. Whoa. Eat it. Another wild pitch, and Pence is at third. I was just trying to overthrow the baseball right there, and he got away from him. How much Dustin Garneau can do with that pitch? Almost hit the bull. How about the catch on a similar pitch Tony Walters made yesterday? He's some sort of athlete behind the plate. Two balls, two strikes on Williamson. Two outs. Got him on a slider. Well done, Boone Logan. Hunter Pence trapped at third base. We move to the eighth in San Francisco on this Mother's Day. The Rockies ahead of the Giants, two to nothing. Good work from Boone Logan.
Thing lead to the eighth. The day after every Rockies victory, get 50% off your online order at Papa John's. Use the promo code ROCKSWIN at PapaJohns.com. Drew Goodman, Ryan Spielborg's Mark Stout on a beautiful Mother's Day afternoon in San Francisco. Rockies return home after the ball game to open up a set against the Diamondbacks. The Mets are in next weekend. Jeff Samarja, 113 pitches in, will remain in to at least face Trevor Story. Cargo's on deck. And he's got the first pitch in there, strike one. Story a double back in the first. He's one for three. Carlos Estevez is up for the Rockies. Fly ball to center field. One out. I assume you'll see Bochi here. Well, maybe one shouldn't assume. I don't even see him. Where is he? He's sitting down. All right, keep going. And, and this goes back to our discussion from last inning. He's looking at Samarja, not looking at a pitch count. He's saying the stuff's great. Yeah, he's doing fine. He's given up one hit since the third inning. Cargo has an infield hit. He's one for three. He's observing. Three World Series titles. There are ten managers all time to have won three world championships. The other nine are all in the Hall of Fame. And two zero. -oh. Two and one. Uh, and a pitcher like Samarja is going to appreciate this because he's on the hook for a loss right now. It, being able to stay out here longer, get his team back in if he's competing and the team's not scoring, gives him a chance to get a win or no decision. Cargo just not picking up the baseball from Samarja. Swung at two pitches out of the zone. He checked on the first one with C.B. Buckner. 2-0 pitch he swung at. He asked him, was that a strike? 2-2. Two -two. That ball's loud to center field. And it is run down by Blanco. That was one of those balls that you see outfielders when Cargo hits a misjudge. Blanco hung in there. Uh, the ball's not carrying quite as well right now. It, we've seen some strange routes from the outfield because of how the wind's swirling. But Blanco is one of the better defensive outfielders in baseball, and he gets a great read off the bat. You can hear how loud that ball is and see where Blanco's playing. He's playing deep to start. They don't want a double. They don't want an extra base hit in this situation. They're still playing. If the Rockies are going to score, they're going to have to put at bats together, and you're going to have to singles for some runs, not hitting extra base hits. Slider for a strike. Nolan tripled in a run in the first. He singled in the third. Struck out looking on a pitch he thought was up in the sixth inning. He's behind 0-2. Carlos Estevez will have a pinch hitter for Samarja. And then Blanco and Panic. Span most likely to pinch hit. And this ball lined toward the gap in left center field. Get down and run. It will to the wall. It'll be a two-out double for Nolan. Single, double, triple for Arenado. And a chance for the Rockies again to produce a two-out run. They've done it twice in this game. And that will be all now for Samarja. With Gerardo Parra coming up, Osich will come in. A hard-throwing left-hander. And a big standing ovation for Jeff Samarja. He's leaving trailing 2 nothing, but the crowd appreciates how well he has pitched.
Seven and two thirds. Really pitched another fine game against the Rockies. 123 pitches. He allowed two runs on eight hits, a walk, and nine strikeouts. He's responsible for the runner at second base. Gerardo Parra coming up to face Josh Osich. And the league hitting 159. Lefties are hitting 077 against a guy who can run the fastball up to 97 or so. So Parra already has a two out single to drive in a run. He's looking for another. An RBI single back in the third. And this goes to the backstop, and it guarantees that any kind of hit is going to score Arenado now. So a wild pitch. Well, Osich is one of the better relievers that the Giants have. He's really Jeremy Athel 2.0 and has a lot of sink on his fastball. Talking to Charlie Blackman. Yesterday he had 2-0 count, 2-1 count, both fastball counts, both looking for it. He said, man, that ball just sinks straight down. Para hits it sharply, and it takes a bad hop, but Crawford stayed with it. You almost never see that on big league diamonds. That ball took a bad hop, and Crawford hung in there. Old glove shortstop from a year ago. It remains 2-0. New episode of the club. We've got hitting coach Blake Doyle mic'd up. He'll take you inside BP and give you a taste of big league hitting. Jenny is going to sit down with Ryan Raber. That is our conversation of the week. And we're also going to get a look at the hot start that Chad Bettis has had. All that and more. That's after the post game, after today's game, after the club. Walt Weiss came out. He's going to make a pitching change. Boo Logan off the hill. We'll tell you about it when we come back to AT&T Park.
Rockies up 2 nothing. So this, this was a smart move by Walt Weiss. He feared having to, to face Span. He leaves Logan in a warm up. Logan's already in the game. You can do this. Tomlinson gets announced. They're going to pinch hit Tomlinson. That's when Walt walks out and makes the pitching change. So now Tomlinson gets burned because they bring him back to go to a left-handed bat. Now, surprisingly, it's not Span. It is Connor Gillespie. So Gillespie will lead off in the nine spot. Two players burned because of that move by Walt. And Carlos Estevez, the young right-hander. And he misses down low again. It's 2-0. and oh. Well, Walt's continuing to put Carlos in these situations where this is high leverage late in the game against the Giants. You're going to get to the top of the lineup, to the teeth of, of this Giants team. And it's 3-0. and oh. We cannot walk the first batter that late in the game. Well, it, anytime late in the game. It burned the Rockies yesterday in the 13th inning. Justin Miller walked two. Duffy eventually with the line drive to end the game. That's at the knees. Three and one. And that was a borderline strike. Bochy's barking at CB. Bochy barks at everybody. Midfield straight up. And this ball is popped up in. The wind's taking it. And I don't know if Nolan sees it. That's a tough play. He's right near the barrier. Wind was blowing that toward the stands. the toughest outs of a ball game. Six outs to go for the Rockies. 3-2. Center field well hit. Charlie's there. Well, I liked his movements. Your former center fielder, he took a drop step initially because if you take to the other, if you go the other way, you're in trouble, aren't you? Yeah, yeah absolutely. You talk about, especially with the way the ball is carrying today with the wind. That ball was hit hard, didn't travel much. The ball coming off the bat right now is, is just not traveling. And so Charlie does a good drop step. He opens up, so it allows his eyes to read the ball flight. One out, Gregor Blanco, one for three. And Blanco hits it in the air to deep right, but this is easy for Cargo. Two outs. Well, and after falling behind 3-0 to Gillespie to come back, get Gillespie to fly out. Now you got Blanco to fly out. You have to trust your fastball, and we can see it. Estevez is, is trusting his stuff. Panic, a line out, a ground out, and a fly ball to fairly deep right field. And he takes a strike at the knees at 97. Boy, I like this kid. You like his arm, but just how he goes about his business. Every Sunday home game this season is bike to the game, including Sunday, May 15th. Get more info at rockies.com slash green. I'll come by and I'll pick you up, all right? Tandem bike or a unicycle? No, just uh, we'll ride our own bikes, but I'll just drop by so we can go in together. Oh, okay. I with the fastball, and it's one and two. I don't know if I've ever driven a tandem bike. You ever been on a tandem bike? I don't think so either. One, two. Talk about spin rate. I think with those big hands, he can create some spin rate. Oh, absolutely. 2-2. Two, two. That's 98. 
I'm with you. You said it the other day. He's going to feel frisky one day, and he's going to he's going to hit triple digits. He's done it before. That's a wild one. Look at that. Wow. 11 straight trips for Harper. He was walking off. He thought he had strike three. Another 98 mile an hour heater. So it's three and two on panic with Duffy on deck. Let's see where this pitch is. That ball runs back. It's off the plate in the Subaru strike zone. But still a well located pitch. It could set this one up. Oh, that cut. So panic walks and Duffy will come up. Duffy's 0 for 3. Duffy at a Long Beach State. Carlos Estevez from Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic. Two outs in the eighth inning. The Rockies got a run in the first, a run in the third. Trying to make it stand up here on Mother's Day in San Francisco. Trying to earn a split of this four game series. Boy, I hate that. And it's, so I think, it's, you know, in fairness to C.B. Buckner, I think it for the, I said this many times, I think it's the hardest call for an umpire because when you hear somebody yell time, your natural inclination is, you know, to, to mirror what they say, time, and award it. Yet you're trying to watch you know, as a pitcher about to deliver the baseball. It's very difficult. And one and one. Gillespie lined out. Blanco hit a fly ball to right. Two gone after the walk to Duffy, or excuse me, to Panic. Duffy up there. And the slider misses. Two and one. Make a pitch. 2-1. And it's 3-1. and one. Posey on deck. You don't want to see him here. Nope. pitches nine have been strikes three and two panic will be moving in the air foul down the right field line and it's out of play and this is why Matt Duffy in the three spot is such a great thing for Matt Duffy. He's protected by Buster and by Belt and all the other great hitters in the Giants lineup that you would rather be beat by Matt Duffy than the other guys. So you're gonna try to get after Matt Duffy with the fastball. Outfield very deep, protecting against the extra base hit. Ball four. Well, um, you're not going to get that call if you're spraying the ball all over the place. Fastball, it's well located. It's running back. 
And as good of a job as Garneau does to try to stick that and hold that for C.B. Buckner. When you're missing location over and over again, you're not going to get a borderline strike call. Now Walt is going to go to the veteran, Chad Qualls, when we come back to face Buster Posey with two on. Rockies up 2-0, two, two outs in the eighth. in the eighth inning nothing ever easy in the beautiful city of San Francisco two men on Buster Posey coming up who wants tacos fans follow at root sports underscore arm on Twitter to receive alerts for the Rockies taco special when the Rockies score seven or more in a game so Chad Qualls is going to face Buster Posey panic at second Duffy at first two gone in the eighth they've matched up only three times in the past Posey is one for three. Well, you know Buster Posey scares me with as great of a swing, and it scares me even more when you're the type of hitter he is and you're 0 for your last 12. Here we go. First pitch strike. up car going right waiting he sees it he's got it well done Chad Qualls will go to the ninth the Rockies lead it to nothing two Giants stranded by Qualls
a uh, large boat. We go to the ninth inning. DJ is going to lead it off. Albert Suarez is on for the Giants and he's making his major league debut. Suarez came up from AAA a couple days ago. 2880 two ERA down in AAA. He's actually starting some for Sacramento. Signed in the offseason as a minor league free agent. So Albert Suarez against LeMahieu, Ben Paulson, Dustin Garneau. Well, and in waiting for his opportunity to pitch, I've probably seen him throw 600 pitches in the Giants bullpen warming up to get in. Twenty-six year old is from Venezuela. And after watching all the pitches in the bullpen, I know he has uh, he'll turn his body quite a bit as he does his windup. Originally signed by the Rays. And then he was with the Angels for a year in their organization. Had never pitched above double A until this year. And he's always been a starting pitcher. 2 up. 3 0. In fact, Suarez. Has exactly four, no, let me check that. Five relief appearances, now six. Having trouble counting. Six relief appearances in his career in professional baseball. It goes all the way back to 2008. Three and one. Hockey's trying to add on for Jake McGee in the ninth. DJ being patient, takes another pitch. It's a strike at 95, three and two. Good movement on his fastball for Suarez. has overcome some things. He had Tommy John surgery in 2009. He also was beset with Lyme disease, which usually carried by ticks. This ball lied to left. Hung a breaking ball, and turning on it is DJ for a leadoff knock here in the ninth inning. Let's take a look at our century link. Link to what's next. Here's the next few weeks of baseball. Rockies at home for the next week. Diamondbacks for three. No television Wednesday afternoon. The Mets are in on the weekend. A day off, and then the Rockies will play three in St. Louis, three in Pittsburgh. It's another long road trip. And three in Boston. Nine games over ten days. Paulson at the plate. Right now. Eric Young's got that stopwatch at. You got a young pitcher you don't have a, a ton on. And he's taking a look at delivery time to the plate for DJ. Two and oh. Here typically. No, not in this hitter's count right here. You know, let Paulie get a good pitch and, and pick one out. Two and one. Paulson 0 for 3, ground out to short. And a couple of strikeouts against Samarja. Samarja went seven and two thirds, allowed two runs on eight hits, walked one, struck out nine. Belt comes up with it, and the return throw will get him. 
Three, six, one. On the turn. The DJ puts on his brakes just in case. Belt goes straight to the bag so he can get in a rundown. Belt goes straight to Crawford, knowing that Crawford, as good as he is, is able to make the quick turn in the exchange. And Suarez being the starting pitcher and understanding the PFP and getting over there, he's able to receive the throw from Crawford. So that'll bring up Dustin Garneau. And the Rockies are going to be without Nick Hunley for at least a couple of weeks. He's on the disabled list with an oblique strain. Those are always tricky injuries. I've had it. It takes forever. And even when you start to feel well, you can easily have a setback. And Garneau with the ground ball to Duffy. High throw and safe. What a play by Garneau. Hitting the deck and kind of doing a quick slide to get his feet in. That'll be an error on Duffy. That's his second error of the year. And that'll allow the Rockies to go to their bench and send up Ryan Rayburn. Well, you don't ever want to be diving into first base unless the throw pulls a defender to go up and try to tag you. And just being able to read that, to see that, shows the type of baseball IQ that Garneau has. They're going to take a look at it, New York. Mm, that is close. Yeah, it's hard to tell from that angle because we can't see if the glove contacted Dustin before the foot got to the bag. This angle should be more revealing. There's a tag, his foot's still up in the air. Yeah, the hand's turning, so. It looks like he's going to be out. And Ryan Rayburn is going to be the pinch hitter if it comes to it, but because of the play being under review, they won't announce his name, so it won't. will matter. Rayburn's actually standing in the batter's box hoping to hit. What do you think, Drew? Well, I... You know, you see the glove, the hand bend, which to me indicates that that's when the glove's making contact with the leg, and he is out. So we will go to the bottom of the ninth inning. The Rockies leading 2-0, and Jake McGee will try to close it out.
Colorado Rockies baseball on Route Sports is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Transparency, low fares, nothing to hide. By Wells Fargo, Wells Fargo customers get your two for one Rockies club level tickets by visiting wellsfargo.com backslash Rockies. And by StubHub, looking for great seats? Head to StubHub, the official ticket marketplace of the Colorado Rockies. If everybody at home is enjoying their Mother's Day and they'll enjoy it that much more if the Rockies can get three more outs. They're in front of the Giants, two to nothing. Eddie Butler, six shutout innings. The pen has tacked on two more, and that'll be up to Jake McGee to close it out. And he's going to face the same threesome he saw in the 10th inning yesterday and was unable to preserve the one nothing lead. Uh, here's your chance to run it back and give yourself an opportunity to Get the job done against the same exact group of guys. Rockies have made a change at first. Mark Reynolds in for Ben Paulson. And the first pitch misses ball one. That's been one of the issues with McGee. He's gotten into hitters counts too frequently. Belt tripled off of him yesterday and eventually scored the equalizer in the 10th. McGee is seven out of nine. Yesterday, his second blown save. We had the one against the Dodgers. On the inside corner, first strike at 93. And yesterday in the bat against Belt, McGee had Belt on the ropes, two and two count. And threw a ball that was well out of the strike zone and really Belt knew, here we go. I'm gonna get the fastball. We know you're gonna get fastball, but it's where the location is. That's good pitch. 94, right on the inside corner at the knees. You'd see the fastball and the location. That's what's important. You miss more middle part of the plate, and Belt will be able to put the barrel on it. Cargo trying to defend triples alleys. Right in that slot. Here's the one-two. Breaking ball, check swing, tough play, and McGee is not going to have a play. Wouldn't you know it? <laughs> I mean, you make a great pitch, you get an excuse me swing, and it turns into an infield hit. Nothing ever easy here at AT&T for the Rockies. And now you have Hunter Pence, Brandon Crawford falling right up. It's just what the Giants do. You put the ball in play. He's not even trying to put the ball in play. Completely fooled on the pitch. And McGee trying his best to get to that baseball. Maybe his best opportunity to, to get it is to just let the ball go and see if it rolls foul. So Pence, who's been perfect today, double infield hit and a sharp single to right, three for three. That pitch misses, ball one. Now the crowd is alive. Crawford on deck. 2-0 Colorado, nobody out in the bottom of the ninth. One thing about Hunter Pence, you know, he's going to get his A swing off, and he's going to get it off no matter the count. Right now, he leads baseball in pitches per plate appearance. But if you throw it in the zone first pitch, he's firing. He's not there to take. It just happens to be that pitchers pitch around him, and that's how he gets so many pitches. But his plate coverage is probably as good to anybody in baseball. So big, such long levers, and he can touch the fastball away. He can get to the pitches inside. And that misses. The swing pitch goes two and one. Missed at 96. Hey, this Two balls and a strike on Pence.
toughest three outs of a ball game. This one matchup, the one yesterday all time between McGee and Pence. Strike three call. Pence got locked up. Out number one in the ninth. What a pitch by Jake McGee right in this situation where you have to get some strikeouts. You have to command your fastball. You have to command your off-speed pitch. And to put this ball right on the inside part of the strike zone. Hunter Pence doesn't like it. But that's a great location, great spot, and great job of receiving by Dustin Garneau. Huge out there. I need not tell you that. Here is Brandon Crawford. An intentional walk back in the second. Fly out, strike out. Fouled off 0-1. From McGee in this inning, he's throwing fastballs that range between 92 and 96 miles an hour. We're used to seeing the big 96, 97 miles an hour, but it seems to me at times he's just trying to locate it. Can that, in a, in a way, obviously location's huge, but the, the three, four, five mile an hour variation at times on the fastball, can that throw off a hitter as well? Not when you're geared up for fastball, because if you miss location with a lower velocity, it's going to be hit. And we've seen it. It's He's been getting hit. When you throw 96 and you miss location, you're not, it's, you're going to foul that pitch off. 0 oh, 1. That misses at 96. One ball, one strike. Long day, tough day yesterday. He'll stay as long as it takes to get a W. Unfortunately, the Rockies lost 2-1 to one in 13 yesterday. They want to go shake hands. Close this one out. One out in the ninth. And a ground ball could be two. There's a good flip story. Double play, ball game over. And the Rockies win it two to nothing. What a performance by Eddie Butler in the bullpen. The Rockies earned the split in the four game set with the Giants. And for the first time ever, on a 10 game West Coast swing, the Rockies finish above 500. They go six and four on trips to Arizona, San Diego, and the Giants. And the Rockies improved to 15 and 16. The Giants dropped to 17 and 16. In two hours and 55 minutes, the Rockies will enjoy this Mother's Day. What a special performance today. And our Jimmy John's delivery of the game. It began with Eddie Butler, six shutout innings, and then the bullpen blanked the Giants in that terrific.